we're going to go over this victim trap. So I need to set a few things for you. Notice that, number one, if the victim trap, there's three players. This is actually a card game we play in our homes, in our families. Each of us plays it, and each of you will take a different role on. So I want to explain what the roles are so you understand this. So every single person, from victim to persecutor, persecutor to rescuer, and rescuer to victim, have unclear boundaries. We've just got a litany of why we have unclear boundaries inside of a family. Quick. The rescuer, I'm sorry, the victim, will always feel self-blame. They live in a personal pity party. That's their, their place of residence. And they will always use pity as love. They don't know the difference. Now imagine if two people marry each other who both live inside the victim world. They, all they know is pity as love. How are they going to treat their children? Now the, um, the rescuer lives inside the martyr world and the persecutor, persecutor lives in the world of self-righteous. By the way, persecutors are always right. If you ever met someone who's always right, high probability they're a persecutor. Go and flip. Now, go ahead and read those under subtitles as I tell you the story. On Easter, Barbara, the sister of our, our star in the story, Marty, invited everyone to her house for dinner. Marty did not want to go because after several months of learning these constructs, <laughs> she was aware of what we call the victim game. She was, however, persuaded, notice the word, by Barbara through guilt, the all-purpose family tool that gets just about anyone to do anything. Marty, knowing the victim game well, talks of how she had to suffer to go to the Easter dinner. So she's telling the story, and this is what's going on inside the story. Quote, my husband had just finished a 36-hour work-a-thon, and we hadn't seen each other in four days. But we made the long drive, it was 300 miles, just to see the family and to make Barbara happy. And the minute we walked in the door, mother ruined everything. Soon after we walked in, mother began talking about how I never used to help with the dishes, and that tonight I was expected to do the dishes. Now that's how she was greeted at the door after a 300 mile drive. Okay, just for a second, what's going on inside of Marty's mind? Why? <laughs> I'm going to break those dishes. Okay. <laughs> All right. That set the evening up for the game. Marty became defensive, and the minute you go defensive, are you this way or are you this way? Okay. So the minute you go into defensive posture, you're already fragmented. She said nothing aloud, but this is what's going on inside of her mind. You crazy old witch. <laughs> I've always done the dishes. You're the one who's never done anything. You've always treated us like slaves. We had to do everything so that you and dad could argue and fight all night. So what's the narrative now? Just think in your mind, what are her be beliefs? And what are her behaviors through her whole life towards mom and dad? We were never really allowed to be children because you had so many damn kids that there was no end of the work. <laughs> I've never done the dishes. You're nuts. Now that's her narrative inside of her head. She's saying that to herself. By her first statement, the mother pushed Mary into the victim role by persecuting her. Do you see how, how it's working on the board there? Marty feels victimized and responds mentally by persecuting her mother. So though she views herself as the victim, she now goes on the attack and becomes the persecutor. The evening is already ruined and it hasn't even begun. After a few minutes, Marty is steaming and takes Barbara into the kitchen. Barbara's her sister. And she lets it all out on Barbara, blaming her for always trying to get the family together when she knows they all hate each other. So now Marty's given heck to Barbara in the kitchen. But the mother's out in the living room listening to Barbara get heck from Marty. So what's the mother got to do? She's got to run in and watch the chaos that she created. People of lesser persona, if you will, you know, they have to create, foster, foment the process so they can run in and start rescuing. There's our victim trap. I'm not going to finish the story, but you get the gist. Every one of us, to some degree or another in our lives, have participated in that. 
critical aspect is knowing that it exists. And so when mom, dad, brother, sister, spouse, whoever, gets into your space and they go, here, want to play a card game with me? <laughs> Here's what we typically do. We go, no, 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 not interested. I need two cards. <laughs> <laughs> and off we go to the races. Because on that first comment, Marty went from this to this and never came back. End of the story was within five minutes of mom re-entering the kitchen and before dinner, Marty and her husband drove 300 miles back home. Mm -hmm. Wonderful holiday experience. <laughs>